All right, this is the last piece. When we think about mastering the art and science of product marketing, product launch, OKRs and metrics are key. Let's dive in. So what is a product launch or a solution launch? It's about taking the current product to the market. Here are the 10 steps that I've used to develop a product solution launch as an integrated marketing program, bringing together product, marketing, and sales all in alignment of the launch of the planning, the OKRs, objectives and key results of what we want to achieve from this launch, all the way to the launch activity, and then also tracking information post-launch. Planning and OKRs are key, and we'll dive into some of the examples for OKRs in a bit. But let's go through the 10 steps. First is making sure we know what we want to achieve from the launch. Getting consensus across product sales and marketing to do the same. Second is putting together your messaging. So if you have a new product or if you have an existing product and you're appending new features and capabilities to meet market demand, that's what messaging is. This goes back to the first exercise that we talked about, messaging and positioning. Once you've completed your messaging and positioning, then we work on the web page. This is your copy, design, as well as looking at what assets do you need for your web page. Maybe you need a spotlight video. Maybe you're looking at additional content in terms of collateral. This could be an overview document, an asset that you've created that would be consumable. Then, because this is a first time launch, you always want to have an early adapter program. The intent is to make sure you're ironing out all the kinks before you actually have general availability. And then define your 30, 90, 180 day metrics. This is intended so you are actually tracking progress, not just the day of the launch, but post launch up to six months. That's when you actually define the success of your launch. And that's how your OKRs would be as well. And then you need to be thinking about training and enablement. First, the training is for your services team, your support team, and your customer success. Making sure we have all those things ironed out first. Then you're also putting together your blog and your social media content. Once you have all of those ready, right before the launch, you're also working on your global sales enablement. Once you've completed those, then you're ready for launch. You don't want surprises for the company and your teams to not know that you have a big launch coming and for them to get the information when they see a press release or an announcement. Day of the launch, this could be a webinar, this could be an event, it could be an announcement that you're making. That's where you look at everything that you work together from planning, strategy, go to market, all the way to execution for that launch date. But post-launch, remember your 30, 90, 180 days. That's when you're tracking what is it that we achieved? How did we achieve it? What are some things that didn't work as planned? And then iterate because your launch is never done. It's a continuous process. It's a journey. So let's actually talk about how do we define product launches. Here's an example that I came across uh, from my career and I find this very beneficial, especially as you're thinking about different launch tiers and how to be bringing those tiers together. These scoring questions help evaluate what kind of a launch is this? Is it a level one, level two, or level three? So as part of launch prioritization, you are looking at the launch level, so the tier, you're looking at the launch type, you're looking at your launch risk, as well as additional information. So the questions that are part of the scoring are for the product manager and the product marketing manager to work together on. Will this help grow revenue by attracting new business or unblocking deals? Will this help increase revenue from existing customers through upsell and cross-sell? Will this increase stickiness or activation and therefore reduce churn? Will it help increase adoption of your product platform or solution? Is it an innovator? Is it a differentiator? And roughly what percentage of your current customers is this relevant to? 
as you work through the scoring, you will get a number and that total score will tell you, is it a level one? So score between level two, 12, level two, score between eight to 10, and then level three, score between one to three. The intent is to get clarity on what needs to get done when and what resources and time will be allocated for it. Once you have the launch prioritization, you're also looking at your launch types. Is it a new product? Is it a new version, a solution? All of this information will help you define what kind of a launch is it. And then working together with the different stakeholders and teams, you can define the different launch phases. All the way from pre-launch, the activities that are involved, the teams that would be involved, to launch, and then working towards your post-launch from there. So another piece of pro launch prioritization is what are your primary and secondary launch goals? Net new revenue, expansion revenue, churn reduction, adoption, awareness, and industry leadership. There are different market segments that these will apply to. And so your offerings and your launch risk will vary all the way from low to high and medium in between. These are great ways to assess what are your launch goals, what is it that you're trying to achieve, and then prioritize your resources accordingly. As a startup, you don't really have much to work with. So make sure that you're prioritizing in the right way, in the right fashion, and making sure that you are looking at the utmost importance of what your launch goals are and what you're working towards. If you have too many priorities and too many projects you're working on, it would be very difficult to prioritize and have the focus that you need to have a successful launch. As part of your launch, you also have to be thinking about your competition. So make sure as you're putting together the assets that's needed for training and enablement, you also have a good understanding of the competitive intelligence. Why we win, why we lose, what are some objection handling, what are some of the fear, uncertainty and doubt that we're hearing, and if there is an element of analyst perspectives, bring that into the fold. Or maybe it is um, user review sites where you're capturing information about you, the market, or the competition itself. We've leveraged Clue as one of the solutions to help us as part of bringing the competitive intelligence to the sales teams and also capturing feedback from sales uh, into our product marketing efforts. So this has been very beneficial. And last but not least, we also wanted to talk about OKRs and how OKRs play a very important role. I'm a big fan of John Doerr and the OKR model, and I always encourage folks to check out his TED Talk, Why the Secret to Success is Setting the Right Goals. As part of OKRs, if you're trying to bring objectives and key results together, always remember to have maximum three objectives. and here, I have aligned my three objectives to the core values that we have as a team. So impact, influence, and inspire. The first one, impact, is aligned to customer. Influence is aligned to the employee. And inspire is aligned to the business. So depending on what the priorities are for the launch, you can define your key results accordingly and then track it quarter by quarter. Remember the 30, 90, 160, 180 days that we talked about? That's intended to trickle back into the quarter system and to also give you a way to track your progress as well as the time frame that it takes to get from point A to point B. These are all great ways to think about your OKRs. And as a team, you can work together uh, with your leadership to build the priorities accordingly. Last but not least, I also wanted to bring together what it means to track metrics and actually capture that information in a dashboard. For me, it was important to know how the products were functioning, what industries we were performing in, and what solutions were actually getting the value that we wanted. So we looked at what are some of the top blogs, top videos, top webinars, top assets, just to understand what's performing really well and what's not, so that we are spending our time and effort on the assets that are valuable for our buyers as well as valuable for our customers. Then we also looked at what our new assets are, uh, case studies, new markets, 
if there is disruptive technology that uh, look, we are looking at, and then also getting a pulse on the competitive intelligence. And then last but not least, it's important to track your product usage and adoption. So this is from going from a trial to a paid, looking at your product and solution launches that we just touched on, your buyer persona that we talked about in the previous segment, talking about your audience growth, and then your sales revenue, so top ACV and TCV, as well as top marketing channels for attribution. This dashboard is something that will help you make sure you're tracking in the right direction and giving a single dashboard view for everybody across the team. Thank you so much for listening today. I hope you find this valuable and feel free to reach out to me on LinkedIn, Polywork or on Growth Mentor and you can read more about some of my product marketing recipes for success on devmanikam.substack.com slash product marketing. Here are some of the articles that I've written, Mastering the Art and Science of Product Marketing, Experience Reimagined, Beyond the Boundaries in Marketing, Art of Storytelling with Trust and Truthful Conversations, Messaging and Positioning, A Customer Journey. Thank you and have a wonderful day.